So Manchester City are four points clear at the top of the league. A 3-1 victory against Watford in a game uh, that feels so familiar. I've got a massive sense of deja vu watching this end of the season. Basically, teams defend, but we eventually get the three points. So don't forget, this channel is sponsored by OneFootball. Loads of amazing stats you can see scrolling down the side of me. It's a great app. It's free. I highly recommend it. Please download it. It does this channel a massive favour. And also, it does yourself a massive favour because it's where I get all my Manchester City news. So go and download it because it's dead, dead good at a problem. It's where you get all the in built stats and all that kind of stuff live as the game progresses and I also want to say thank you uh, to Nathan Barker my latest patron Nathan you're an absolute hero this is your shout out your name will be scrolling down the side as well in every video going forward so you want to get involved patreon.com forward slash esteem company but let's move on to the actual game uh, before we go into the details of the match itself overall let's look at the lineup before and we went with Edison in goal obviously company in Austin Mendy there with Laporte on the bench for this game and Stone still a bit of a doubt after you know recent injury woes Zinchenko once again Again, carried on left back, Walker uh, right back, and then into midfield, Gundogan uh, played as a number six yet again. Uh, obviously, on a run of games, uh, given Fernandinho's injuries, David Silva partnered Bernardo, then Mares out wide, uh, Aguero for the middle, and Sterling on the left. Um, not an overall surprising lineup. De Bruyne not involved, obviously, because of injury worries, and um, Foden on the bench as well. Um, maybe I was a little bit surprised not to see Sane start, but not too much. Wasn't too surprised to see Mares get a game, especially given the fact that Mares' record against Watford uh, for Leicester for City uh, is really really good there was no goal for him today but it made a lot of sense and this game was huge because once again we had a chance and we succeeded in putting pressure on Liverpool. They've obviously got Burnley tomorrow at Anfield. I'm sure they'll probably win that, but it's a game now where they've got to look forward uh, and get something because they know if they don't, basically, uh, it, it's, it may be impossible for them to catch Manchester City. Uh, and this was a game that Guardiola took very seriously. Uh, and you could tell in general that the players were up for it. Into the first half, it wasn't a classic, no. Um, I know it's that trend once again of people on social media getting a bit tetchy. Football is a 90 minute game this uh, stage of the season you've got to basically be prepared for uh, difficulties and I think that's a fair thing to say because every game at this stage of the season is going to be basically uh, predictable. Uh, City are going to be not quite as sharp as they usually are um, the teams are going to sit deep because teams are tired as well so they haven't got the mental energy to do anything other than defend that early season kind of positivity has faded away and now it's reality so teams will come to the Etihad and just defend and I, I kind of don't really blame them so basically I'm not expecting City to be at their sparkling scintillating best at the moment because legs are heavy there's more mental pressure in each game so there's loads of reasons why they won't be at the free flowing best even having said all that I don't think we played badly in the first half City was still by far the better team uh, Aguero Gilsey missing one chance Mares firing over and good Zinchenko across David Silva nearly connecting with a header we had a lot of moments nobody went fantastic maybe the pace was a little bit too slow but it's almost like the pace is slower because we're just feeling mentally slower and more physically slower at this stage of the season I don't really blame him for that and it's just part of what I expected which goes back to the whole it's a 90 minute game we, we always come out better uh, in the second half and I think people need to realise sometimes you need to get things wrong to correct them and get them right it's almost like it's not necessarily a bad thing not being uh, perfect as long as you correct it. It's like a game of chess, essentially. You have to reassess your strategy, uh, constantly depending on how they come out. City didn't know that uh, Watford were going to sit that deep. We don't really know until we've seen it actually in action. You can have a guess, definitely, but you can't always predict how a team's going to play. Sometimes someone like Guardiola needs to watch the first 45 minutes, think uh, and assess where the weaknesses are, and then come out like the second half like we did, and I'll go into it now, and then essentially blow them away in the first 15 minutes. Right, that goal, that's get out of the way <laughs> it's a massive absolute massive mistake from the referee I think the referee thinks the touch doesn't come off Aguero into Sterling's path people go yes but the defender touched the ball before Sterling did that, that's totally irrelevant uh, on the TV stream that I was watching they essentially said that shouldn't have counted anyway because um, he's active we all know that Aguero touches the ball Sterling's ahead of him he's offside Sterling goes to hit it the fact the only reason the defender hit the ball in the first place is because he was trying to tackle an offside player it shouldn't have been given we got very lucky I'm not going to complain I think we probably deserved it in the end uh, but we got lucky there's no harm in going yep we got a bit of luck there and after some questionable decisions anyway and maybe because Liverpool had a few offside goals you can turn around and say it's all balancing out and I will take that uh, a lucky decision uh, the referee just got it wrong I think he spoke to the linesman the linesman uh, they weren't sure who the ball came off and all that kind of stuff there's no way that he pretend that that would not be given offside but you know sometimes you get a little bit of luck the second goal though uh, there was no luck involved in that a brilliant drag back um, an overlay 
We made their hesitancy count. Uh, Sterling tapping. The third goal was just pure brilliance. Sterling, the composure to receive the ball. I think it was David Silva who played the pass. Cut inside. And just when he looked like he was about to be closed down, he perfectly fired home for a hat trick. Raheem Sterling is absolutely on fire. And that basically killed the game for us. It won the game at that moment. There was a a, a really sloppy goal. Uh, De La Feo scoring after a Troy Deeney flick on. Both had just come on as substitutes. Um, the whole defence switched off there. Zinchenko, Otamendi company, all kind of left a little bit kind of flat footed if we're being honest um, and then it was basically after that about 10 billion chances to grab our fourth goal uh, Bernardo and uh, Sani in particular both guilty of shooting when they maybe should have passed Gabriel Jesus sitting the keeper on his arse but couldn't quite fire at home due to a last ditch tackle um, but we saw the game out we saw the game out and we got a big three points uh, a 3-1 victory and now it's on to Liverpool individually Edison had very little to do uh, a funny moment where Guardiola was fuming because he played a long ball uh, he might have even been trying to score when he maybe should have kept it simple Zinchenko had a decent game. I thought he was a little bit uh, switched off for their goal. But once again, he had a reliable game. Not as sparkling as recent performances, maybe. But it was a solid 7 out of 10 for Zinchenko. And that's all you want. Company Otamendi. I don't think they're the most uh, reliable partnership I don't think they were awful. Maybe they switched off uh, for that goal. But, you know, they were there. They were a stopgap. They got the job done. And neither, you know, neither covered themselves in glory. But I don't think either had a shocker. They were just, you know, very 6 out of 10 performances. And I'm totally fine with that, really. As long as they don't um, present too many easy chances. As long as we can do the business down the other end of the pitch. I think we all know they're our third and fourth choice centre-back. So I'm expecting a third and fourth choice centre-back performance for both of them. And that's kind of what we got. Just a bit, you know, iffy. But acceptable, I would say. And Kyle Walker, I thought I had a pretty decent game. He was solid going forward uh, one particular run uh, someone should have been attacking his cross better because it was a really nice place he seems to go over his like um, his head fart moments at the moment which is a good thing Gundogan uh, was a little bit slow at times passing it a couple of really nice dinks passes over the top but once again a very six stroke seven out of ten kind of performance nothing memorable and the same could be said for David Silva though he did kind of have moments where he showed more of the David Silva uh, of old I say of old of like two months ago before his uh, slight drop in form shall we say a beautiful pass though for Sterling for one of the goals um, and in general he had a decent game Bernardo ran just about everywhere as he always does uh, some lovely little moments uh, some moments where he made the wrong decision maybe but uh, Bernardo was basically one cog in the team that worked really hard I thought Morris had a pretty decent game outright not a, not a stellar game but a solid game definitely nowhere near the um, the shit show that was the Liverpool performance if we're being honest um, and he, he looked like a Manchester City player uh, he could have had an assist or two with some decent passes but it didn't quite happen for him Sterling um, it was a weird one first 45 terrible but then he showed his uh, I guess his determination and desire to be in the right positions at all times uh, and two of those goals came from his, his tenacity in his position yeah there was a bit of fortune on the first one but he had to be there and he chased it down and the third one was just his increased composure Ryan Sterling has to be in contention for play of the year because he consistently scores consistently creates goals and even even when he doesn't play that well he still makes a difference and that says it all about how good a play he's actually becoming for Manchester City Football Club I love Raheem Sterling and I think it's shocking how many people don't realise how good he's actually become for City he's phenomenal he's really phenomenal and the rest of the world needs to wake up and realise actually how good he is since the start of last season now he's up to 53 goals and assists in the Premier League alone that is absolutely phenomenal that's world class numbers and that's what he's doing and he's alongside another world class player Sergio Aguero who had fought a decent game uh, didn't quite come off for him in terms of chances uh, but he worked hard he must be knackered at the moment uh, Aguero so it'd be a good time for him to get a bit of a rest now hopefully after the Schalke game and so on because he does need a bit of a rest uh, Gabriel Jesus came on looked lively played a beautiful pass to Bernardo Silva towards the end which Bernardo didn't quite read unfortunately and he could have had a goal nice composure to sit the keeper down but it was a great last ditch tackle from uh, one of Watford's defenders I think it might have been Jan I can't remember who it was uh, Sane had a decent little cameo uh, lively it must be a nightmare to defend against when you're tired nothing maybe to write home about but a decent little cameo and Foden got a couple of minutes towards the end I wish he'd got a little bit longer I don't see why he wouldn't get longer he probably needs the game time and David Silva could have had a rest with 20 minutes to go what do we know? Pep knows more than us, I guess, about that. But overall, um, it wasn't a scintillating display. But as I said earlier, I'm not expecting scintillating displays at this time of the season. I'm expecting teams to sit deeper because they're tired, uh, because they're being more cautious. And I'm expecting the fact that we're tired and the fact that we're getting a bit more predictable because, I guess, time numbs the senses a little bit. It's only going to happen. All I want to know is that the players are working hard, and they did work hard. And they've got the right reaction to any changes Guardiola puts in. And they have done that. And once again, we found a way to win. A bit fortuitous for the first goal, but we were the better team overall by a long long way um, we don't totally deserve that we totally deserve that victory and now we put pressure on Liverpool yet again
Now, I suspect Liverpool will win tomorrow, but there's only like, you know, eight games left for Manchester City now. You know, we played 30 games. Uh, it's getting really, really close to the end of the season. Uh, Liverpool now are four points behind with a game in hand. Um, Burnley are in decent enough form at the moment. Burnley could get a draw there, and a surprise, maybe potentially quite an edgy Anfield crowd, because they know that if they, don't, if they drop points, they are going to be three points behind us. Maybe, and it, it kind of equals, uh, it could be four points behind, but even if they draw, it's three points. And then given our goal difference, it's essentially four points. So, so there's a lot of pressure on Liverpool tomorrow and that's all we've got to keep doing this is why I like it when we play first but basically now we've got through another difficult game uh, and we've just got to keep winning and that's hopefully what we'll do but anyway guys let me know in the comments below your man of the match what you thought of the game overall thank you once again to these people scrolling down the side of me these are my patrons to keep this channel going you're all absolute heroes no it is Nathan's that name's behind as well thank you Nathan very much uh, if you want to get involved patreon.com forward slash esteemed company if you don't just keep watching these videos keep liking these videos make sure you subscribe if you're new uh, to esteemed company and I will see you tomorrow.